Now I want to show you how to spread Lepidoptera. So when pinning Lepidoptera, you need to spread the wings, both the right side and the left side, and you want to spread the forewing and the hind wing when spreading Lepidoptera specimens. And this is for all butterflies and all moths. Well, we're going to start off with moths, since moths will probably be the most will be the most common Lepidoptera that you'll collect in your collection. There's many different uh, pieces of equipment that you can use to spread uh, Lepidoptera, butterflies and moths. The, there are spreading blocks that you can use that BioEquip provides, uh, which is a piece of wood uh, that has a piece of uh, cork or styrofoam at the base and then two uh, sliding panels of wood on either side so you can spread it open and you can adjust to the width of the uh, thorax of the specimen. The problem with those wooden blocks though is they, it is a little bit difficult to use on moths. They seem to work pretty good with butterflies and larger Lepidoptera, but when you start getting into smaller Lepidoptera like moths, um, I find that foam blocks seem to be the best. You can use styrofoam uh, with little, little uh, pieces of styrofoam pinned on the styrofoam and then you can separate it to the width that you want it. You can manipulate these pieces to the width of the, uh, the specimen, so if it's something really thick like a sphinx moth, you can spread it out about an inch. Or if it's something really small like a noctuid or geometrid, you can bring these uh, much closer. And these are good because they're lightweight and you can put these anywhere. If you're out in the field, you can use. This basically is a Tupperware container. Um, and we've glued and screwed in um, a piece of styrofoam on the back of this lid and then the styrofoam we just made slits in it at different uh, widths when we take this out in the field we could spread our moths on this, spec on this uh, piece of foam here and then this casing can go over it so your moths are protected and it's really great. You could actually put this into a bag pack, uh, put this into a box or whatever, carry it around, and the specimens stay pretty uh, in pretty good condition without getting damaged in a container like this. This is a tiger moth uh, in the family Arctiidae. When you pin Lepidoptera, you pin them the same way you would pin bees. Here's the head over here, here's the thorax, and the abdomen is right behind these wings here. And so when I pin this moth, I'm going to pin it right through the center of the thorax like I was pinning a bee. And when you're pinning Lepidoptera, butterflies, moths, you don't want to touch it at all with your skin. On your skin, even your fingers, you have a lot of grease. And every time you touch the specimen, you're going to get a lot of that, you're going to wipe off a lot of those scales with your fingers. So it's best not to touch the moth or, or a butterfly as much as possible with your skin. So I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to push it right through the center of that thorax, push it all the way down, and I want to have a gap where there's at least at least 10 millimeters at the tip here between the specimen and the tip of the pin and there's enough space for at least four labels. Once you've pinned your specimen then you want to take your specimen and put it on your pinning block. I pin the specimen in the pinning block in one of the grooves. So its thorax and body are in between the groove of the foam. I want to take these wings I want to carefully spread them out and so when I'm spreading the wings out I go underneath the wing and lift up. And this way and I'm not using my forceps to grip it, I'm just kind of sliding it under. And this is just to kind of get the abdomen exposed so I know where my wings are. Then I want to have a base pin. And your base pin is to basically put on the side of the abdomen. So if I move this wing here like this, see how that specimen turns? Well, I don't want it to turn like that. So I put this pin right here on the side of the abdomen. I'm not putting it through it. I'm putting it on the side. And that way I could spread this wing out without the whole body moving. Now with the pins, you want to use really fine pins. This is a double-lot pin. 
so it looks like two zeros on the label. A double lock pin is very thin and it's thin enough to where it's not going to leave a big hole in the wing if you use a pin like a number two or a number three. So what I do is I take the pin and I carefully pin through the major vein on the, t on the front wing, the fore wing. And I'm not pinning all the way through to where I'm hitting the foam, just enough to grip the wing and then I pull it up. I'm pulling straight up. I pull the wing straight up. And then when I get it to the distance I want, then I put the pin into the foam. Now I do the same thing with the hind wing. I don't put it in the center of the wing, I put it towards the, one of the major veins. And then I pull out and then slide the pin into the foam. And now the wing is spread. I want to do the same thing to the other side. And I don't need to use, I don't need to use a pin to hold on the other side of this abdomen because the pins on this side of the wing are holding the, are holding the specimen so I can manipulate this side without a problem. So here I go. I put the pin right up at the tip of that a major vein. I pull the wing up. Then I put the pin in the foam. And when I put the pin in the foam, I'm not putting it all the way down like that. Notice I'm just doing just a just probably about four millimeters into the foam. If I put the pin all the way into the foam, then when I have to take these pins out, I gotta pull that whole pin out, and I'm probably gonna end up pulling the wing with it. And I don't want to do that. I do the same thing here with the hind wing, just the tip. I bring it up. So now the both wings are spread. And I take the base pin out. I don't need that anymore. And I what I could also do if I don't want these pins in the specimen, I could take pins with points on them. This is a pin with a point on it, and I could use this to push down on the wing, and that makes the wing flat. I do the same thing on the hind wing. And I'll do it on the other side as well. And these points will hold the wing flat. Another reason why this is good when this specimen dries, then I could take these pins out without the wing coming up either. And then you have a spread specimen. This is a white line sphinx, Hylus lineata. It's one of the most common moths. And this is a, a pretty easy moth to pin. I recommend using this one for beginners who are first starting a moth collection. There are also body parts that are very easy to distinguish. Here's the head, antenna, thorax, and the abdomen, and these are the wings. You can, you can even see the tongue here. Now I've already put the pin through the center of the thorax, just like I would a bee. I take the specimen and I pin it through the foam. So the body is in the center, it's in this gap between these two other pieces of foam. And I'm going to spread the wings using pretty small pins. So here, these are double lot pins. You can use double lot or triple lot. For a moth this big, double lot or one lot are pretty good sized pins to use for the wing. And so when I put the pin in the wing, I'm going for this vein right here, so there's this really strong part. This is the strong part of the wing. I don't want to stick the pin right here because if I try to pull this wing up, then I'm going to breaking parts of the veins here and messing up the wing. So I want to stick the pin just through the tip 
of this major vein that goes along the dorsal side of the wing. And when I put the pin in the wing, I'm not pushing it all the way down into the foam. I'm just putting it in just enough to get a grip on the wing, and then I pull it up. Once I get it to the width, or the height that I want it, then I put the pin into the foam. And I don't push the pin all the way down. If I push it in all the way down like this, well, it's going to be really hard to take that pin out later. And so I just want it just enough to keep that wing up. Again, if the abdomen starts to slide over as you're manipulating the wing, you can use a base pin. You take a pin and put it on the side of the abdomen to hold the abdomen back. That way I could pull these wings up without the specimen, the whole the entire specimen moving up. So I'm going to do the hind wing as well. I take the pin and I put it just through the vein, top vein, and I push that hind wing up to the area I want it, and then put the pin in. And so now I got one side of the wing up. Now I'm going to do the other side. bring it up to where I want it and I want to have it kind of even with the other wing I have it set I put the pin in and now I'm going to do the hind wing and so this base pin I don't need it on this side since the pressure is being pulled on this side from these two pins I don't need to worry about the specimen being moved over when I move these wings and there we go and then I could take that base pin out, I don't need that anymore. And if I want the specimen to stay kind of flat, I can use pieces of paper to make sure those wings stay flat. So this is a piece of paper with a pin, and I could take this, slide it right in between the forewing and the hindwing, and push those wings down so they stay flat. And I do the same thing on the other side. and the moth will dry in this position. Once it's dry, then I could take these pins out. Sometimes I could do it now because the piece, these pieces of paper are holding or putting pressure on the wing so these pins aren't needed. And if you could get them out before the specimen dries, it's good because then it won't leave little holes. And that's how you spread a moth. One consistent problem with pinning Lepidoptera is they don't always die the way you want them to. It would be great if they all died with their wings completely flat, but that's not always the case. And so sometimes you'll have difficult specimens where the wings are kind of upright. And so the best way to pin a specimen like this is you hold the, uh, you hold the thorax, you take your pin, pin it through the center of the thorax and you can use your forceps to kind of hold these wings back and you could also hold the thorax down on the on the pinning block press the pin down to where you want it and there you go you have your uh, specimen is pinned now it's ready for the wings to be spread and that's the hard part once your specimen is pinned then you could put it into the foam block you can take your forceps to kind of push the wings down a bit. Just take a minute uh, a double lot pin, put it through one of the wings, and I'm going to hold the wings down with my forceps. Now, I put this pin though through the base of the vein, and then I'm going to push that wing up to, to the height I want it. and then I could take one of these uh, pins with a point on it and hold that wing in place where I want it. And I'm going to do the same thing with the hind wing. Unfortunately, the hind wing, oh, this is going to be easier to manipulate and push the wing up. And I take a point to hold that wing down as well. 
And I notice the edge here is sticking up a bit. You could take your forceps to push that underneath the forewing. So the forewing kind of overlaps the hindwing just a little bit. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Um, there's many different ways you could do it. Some people, you could take your pin with a point and use it to push the wing back. So I can push the wing with my point down. And then I could take a double lock pin, put it through the edge of that vein, and push up to the direction I want it. And then I could keep moving this back. So I'm pushing this wing down with this point, and I'm holding it with my forceps, and then I get it to where I want it. I put the, the uh, double lock pin to hold that wing down, and I do the same thing with the under wing. And so now I have both sides done. Add a uh, point here to this bottom fore wing or bottom hind wing. And so now I spread one of the moths that are pretty difficult to spread. So if the wings are sticking up, you can still spread it. 